This is a bunch of sweet peppers that I left in the cup too long. They ate the dirt. There's nothing but roots. Um, I guess that's how they do their thing and they get bigger and they just eat the dirt. So the dirt's gone but now there's roots and I'm going to try to break this up and get a bunch of individual plants out of it which I should be able to and then I'll get them in the ground. Check that out though. They ate the dirt. <laughs> to break this up I'm just smacking it on the floor and it's rattling all of the dirt loose and it's working really well if you let your peppers maybe even tomatoes sit in a cup together too long just go through this technique Snap. that's pretty much how I rattle the dirt out of all things like the grass that I pull from the yard for the animals smack it against my knee even I go and it shakes it all out of there I'm gonna get these broken apart into their own little pots the roots are actually in good shape real good shape I should probably have real good success rate I've got a few more even over here I'm gonna do the same with those are hot peppers not as many nearly as many just a few in each one of these little cups but that's the size of the cup it's like a 16 ounce cup rattling them loose it's funny the roots they're not really like tied together at all they're more so just kind of intertwined and when you rattle them it, it shakes them off of each other and out of being twisted together it's pretty wild how it seems to be working and that these peppers can grow so uh, <laughs> close to each other like this in such a small area and eat all the dirt and then uh, gives you all of these starts really I just threw a couple over here and this the little root system on it and this was late later on that I planted a lot of my peppers already so I'm finding places and I'm just gonna get all these in the ground too I'm not letting them go to waste nor these hot peppers at all there will be a spot for them somewhere I fortified my doors to strengthen them for breakdown of the rule of law when people try to come to my house and kick the door in to steal my food and stuff so this is a piece of wood some pepper and it's set here like this wedged between the door it's um, pretty cool it's just like a big old block that I made and there it is now I have that wedge between this here and the door and that should hold it and give me enough time to get to my rifle and then up here this is the side door I have another one and it wedges between the door and the fridge check this out maggot bucket feeder system I just built so this is a 4x4 four four, and it's connected with well this is a cut up extension cord and then it's same type of thing here with a couple of clips attached to this green post with a little bit of wire just kind of uh, manufactured and it's sitting level and I can unclip it and then I can slide buckets on and off of it and fill it up and I'm gonna make them just like this all over the place and I was just checking it out they're starting to create maggots I noticed when I moved the buckets that there were maggots there on the ground so they're starting to drop out now yes and then they'll leave them up I can try to fit four more on here comfortably and then I'll maybe make another string somewhere in here over here somewhere maybe like right here and that'll be good in here and then I'll uh, have to make another one for over there and one under here for these ducks 
so it unclips and I can slide buckets and the buckets sit real nice. I can slide buckets on and off and it sits on this post kind of just rests too so that helps when I'm out here working on it. Regenerative feed source for the chickens to really feed them all through the uh, warm season. Give them grass too. I like your spot. Baby. Look at this. It goes deep back there. Down the rabbit hole. Look at that. Don't let them fool you, they like it. They're just hovering about a foot and a half, two feet off the ground, maybe down there at the end. And the chickens can get right underneath them. See, she's poking at it now. She knows, she knows what's going on with it. They can probably smell it or something, like, hey, this is where the maggots are gonna be. Yeah, this is, this is filthy, I like it. Hey, hey, wanna just, wanna stop that? Thanks. Look at that, look at that bird. What are you doing? You gonna eat? Oh, you better, you better just behave. No? Okay. High capacity. You say so. Thing about my neighbors is I'm getting all of them to grow food <laughs> and I uh, focused on all that because you know and relationships with your neighbors getting to know your neighbors if there's ever you know an incident or some problems you can rely and, and fall back on your neighbors too you don't have to just not just friends and family but neighbors This is uh, cabbages and celeries, tomatoes, and a bunch of stuff here that's getting ready to go out. Here's a bunch of kales. Gotta get these kales in. Asparaguses. I'm bringing them over to my neighbor's house and putting them in. I already put garlic in over there, over here, and other things. Potatoes, raspberry plants. These trees, apple trees, are going to go ahead and go in the front yard. And then maybe one back here and one to my neighbor. And I have a friend that might take them too. Right now I got these out here. Which is some stuff I'm getting ready to put in the cannabis. And a brassica and a celery. And then these eggs I'm using as fertilizer packs. So I'm going to be cracking the egg. Just like this. And putting it in the hole at the bottom right underneath each plant that I feel like I want to do it with I got another dozen duck eggs over there that I'm gonna do the same thing with the tomatoes I got a bunch of tomatoes over there too and that adds nutrients gives them a boost potatoes I still got to put these ones in but I have put potatoes here and all through here and that's what's coming in down here now and then there's potatoes over there too and all through here and then there's potatoes in there I just put in 
and I gotta put something in back there. I'm getting ready to put those cannabis in. And that's what I'm about to do now. And then this is asparagus. Asparaguses, and then these will come back every year like perennials because that's what they are and they will also send up new shoots as they go and grow a lot like the strawberries do i'm building community what i'm doing is every day i get over two dozen eggs and i've got all of my neighbors around here i don't need that many i got like an extra dozen at least every day the way i look at it right now i mean never extra because you can always do something with them but i'm giving them to my neighbors so every time i go and i talk to my neighbors I say hello and we talk about stuff and I give them eggs and I'm building community because well community is important and I'm burning a fire burning all this wood that I have extra saving all the big stuff for my fires for the winter but I have a ton of it in my trailer up front I have to burn all the stuff that's in there and then all the stuff I had from my neighbor a lot of little brush and things so burn it burn baby burn uh so yeah that's it just build community in whichever way um then i got a neighbor across the street over there that's putting in gardens and i'm gonna go talk to her i haven't talked to her yet and i'm gonna bring her eggs i think it's a, a couple and then there's my neighbor over here i'm putting food all in his yard my neighbor tom i give him eggs and, and we got things going food growing now in his yard over there tim he's got food and chickens that he's putting in that I'm going to help him with and inspired him to do a lot of things with that so that's what has to happen when you're this close to all your neighbors you got to have them all on good terms and you want to that's part of the growth in the whole back to nature mindset so it's been a minute like a month since I did a video because my internet's been down and I just haven't paid the bill uh, but I'm gonna pay it and by the time you see this video because that's how it'll be back up so I you know but I feel good I feel strong like my cells have been healing they haven't had any uh, exposure to the frequencies or something um, grow rooms doing great and uh, the uh, stove has got the hearth built stones placed these are peppers that I just up potted in the night last night and they're in new pots now sweet peppers and some hot peppers i've got bell peppers already in the yard there's been a few cooler nights you know they really like it when it's warm outside i think the soil temperature has to be staying above 50 or is it 60. it's warm temperatures is what they want so i'm waiting on those ones to put them out still maybe another week or two but the bell peppers i think they'll be fine still the idea is warmer temperatures for them or they could stump their growth i've still got tomatoes that i gotta get in the ground somewhere but my peach tree is actually flowered already i think it's going to start fruiting now and there's potatoes down here i've still got to plant some other stuff in here and potatoes over there in that raised bed a couple apple trees a few of them didn't do so good they got kind of a uh, dead brown at the tips maybe the introduction to the light did it those are seeds that i started from gala and fiji apples the store bought right now i've got these marigolds getting ready to put into the garden there's some sunflowers and amaranths and those are flowers to attract pollinators and some good color and the amaranths are actually a grain too that'll be fed to the animals the animals whoo that's a whole nother thing going on uh there's nests rabbit nests i've got the ducks that are laying on uh eggs right now getting ready to hatch out eggs the muscovy ducks they're really broody great ducks they're amazing and they're quiet they're red meat so the meat is red meat like a steak that's what I've heard I haven't processed one yet the animals I'm feeding the maggot bucket systems I built quite a few there's three here creating maggots now just talked to a guy at a farm locally because I want to get more chicks and he told me that he's holding on to his chicks he's holding on to them because of what's coming <laughs> I mean I guess it's uh, mainstream now especially among farmers 
that you better be growing your food. I just prepped up these beds here. These uh, maggot buckets. There's another string of them over here. I just I put them on this four by four and hung it. And now there's five of them sitting in here, and they're dropping down to the chickens, and they're eating them. Uh, really, they're going to start producing probably a bunch more. They haven't even produced that many maggots yet, but it hasn't even really been hot yet. But there was a couple nights that came out here, and they were just crawling all over the buckets, all over the ground. The run here for the ducks still, because the pond is still. I haven't finished it yet. I'm not rushing on these projects until summer and then I'll put the rush on them to get them done before fall berries like these blackberry bushes are coming up I trimmed away some of this old growth from last year on the blackberries but I'm waiting a minute because I noticed is that some of them were still green and growing so I don't want to trim away the old limbs yet but I know that that's what you do with blackberries is the old canes is what it is um, after so many a year or two or so you trim off the old canes to make room for new growth so I'm saving them though for my rabbits to eat and then the strawberries are flowering a ton they grew over into my neighbor's yard he's loving it they grew under the fence and threw it and they're just swarming all over there Tim has a bunch I put in Ken does too and the lady across the street, I gave her some. I've been giving everybody food. I'm planting everybody's yards out and getting them all to learn about food and communities. Another thing, community building, because that's exactly where we're headed. And I don't want them eating me. I want them to eat their own food instead. And then trade with me. And look at here. Uh, there's some cabbages and broccolis. And then these are the bell peppers. And then these are the tomatoes. And these little mounds that look like anthills, they are squash, winter squash, and uh, melons. More winter squash than melons, because I want to have those to store up storage through winter. My apple trees, and then another strawberry patch where I put more mounds, more anthills. And then there's bush beans up and mixed in with some of these weeds. So that will probably pop up over the weeds. And there's some cannabis there. One, there's one over there. Two, another hump there which got squash on it. So the squash will grow on around the pond. And these are potatoes. There's still, there's blueberries down here at every post cross section. And another cannabis over there at the side of this pit which is still going to get done just haven't done it yet and then there's another one there another cannabis and then these are the raspberries and they've already done this thing where they are sprouting out new plants whole new bushes from underground from the roots they're just sprouting new ones from last year and they're doing the same over here over here I am putting in these new bedded areas just building sections now outside of this big bed that I built last year and I'm gonna keep on doing that everywhere with the uh, fence material as I go and down and in here is bush beans tons of bush beans just boom 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 three inches apart like 11 or 14 inches rows I, I'm pretty sure it's probably 11 and then you get these thick rows of bush beans and if one or two don't germinate well it'll fill in because you planted them three inches apart and then peas these are all peas lined up back here and it's going to grow up on the trellis same thing on this side and that's going to be early season peas and then after that i'll probably do something else in here i got to find out what's good to plant after peas certain crops you don't want to plant back to back because uh, the nutrients and disease it could be more prone to if it's taking up the same types of nutrients that's probably not good too you want to switch that up so i'm going to look that up and see and then in here is more brassicas and broccolis and this is a raspberry more of that uh, whole raspberry sprout and new plants things going on here and over here too and I pulled quite a few, three or four, was it four? And I planted them in my neighbor's yards. So they're gonna have the same thing happening 
the same phenomenon. It's gonna be great. Potatoes down and in here. And then over here is a row of potatoes. All these are seeds even I saved from last year. All of the Adriondax and some purples and even the store-bought russets, golds and reds. And that's what's over here too. And then I'm gonna plant that out still, but there's potatoes like I was saying, and then the chickens under the deck. And I'm painting the house. I got this last side to caulk and then to paint. The whole other sides of the house are all hit with caulk lines. Great looking. And then uh, I am saving the grass. I got a push mower, a manual powered. So when I clip the grass uh, back here and in the front yard, I've got it on a tarp now that I'm saving it and also feeding it right now but saving it is what I'm mainly gonna focus on to get through the winter I'm gonna bail it up dried get through the winter with that so no more feed costs and then down in here are these pieces of sod that I'm pulling out to make these beds these little sections here I'm keeping them the same as what's going on in here so they match up and line up they're 30 inch rows and the sod is getting fed to the rabbits over here you know bucket tunnel from the garage which is the rabbits colonies two separate sections with the rabbits and chickens living together in that back end and then the ducks and the ra rabbits are living together in this end two different breeds of rabbits silver fox and then new zealand's the muscovy ducks and then Isa Brown chickens, Isa Brown slash sex link. So they're the most productive chickens that there are. They may not be the biggest, but they're gonna lay the quickest eggs. And I have my one rooster dooster inside. So if I need to, but I'm gonna focus more on the ducks for hatching out birds. Cause uh, they're more broody and they're quiet and they can do that out here, but I'll have my rooster. over here with the maggot buckets and I'm gonna make the systems kind of just like this I could fit another bucket on here and that will be six buckets and the buckets is a, a quarter inch hole, drill bit to make those little holes one inch drill bit to make the top holes you layer straw on top of the scraps and you don't have yourself odor and then they love it and in here the rabbits made a nest in this rabbit chicken tractor which is also a duck house so it's got triple quadruple every purpose that i can think of for it and this is great i've probably got like 60 rabbits now just between all the babies and the mamas I'm trying to keep three breeding does to one buck and i want to have six breeding does in each colony so that would be 12 breeding does total and four bucks There's eight in here, I want to say. And in here, in the garage, the silver fox. Let's see if I can get a look at it. I got my headlamp on. No, I need to get my headlamp. Up here, potatoes are in here. I'm getting ready to put this light, grow light, under my cupboard. And this is a mama doe right here. I'm feeding them fresh grass. She just had 13 more babies, little pinkies. They're just uh, two days old. I moved them from out in the colony and got them in here so that they're safer. Over here I have grow outs that I'm getting ready to take to the flea market. I'm gonna go down to the flea market and sell them at 40 bucks a pot. There's eight of them. There's four New Zealands, four silver fox. I figured they'll be gone in about an hour. You know, all the little kids jumping around wanting them. And then I'm going to put a sign up too that says meat rabbits. Breed your own food now before uh, there's none in the stores. And, uh, and prices hyperinflate. So that'll intrigue people to want to buy them. And I'll put, you know, that they're eight weeks old and they breed prolifically. Just some enticing things on a sign at the flea market. And I think that will be uh, beautiful for sales and build community that way too. And all in here, there's some 
of these cucumbers on the wall. Nothing's really fruiting with the cucumbers so much, except over here they did. And I ate the fruits. They didn't get too big though. It's probably just being indoors and maybe the soil. Not watering because I'm watering them good. So we'll just, I'll continue to learn as I go with those and try to mend the soils even better for this potting mix and see if that's it. Maybe it's the lighting though. But other than that, you know, I've been making the uh, habanero powder off of these habaneros growing. And then these peppers down here are going to go outside. And everything's just kind of um, calming down a bit indoors while I'm focused so much outdoors. I came in to get my headlamp, but I might as well look at these. There's some more potato seed here. Uh, cannabis is actually budding really good now and I'm gonna go ahead and do something with that soon then down here is corn that I'm starting to get out there in all the new beds that I'm making uh, we got some dent corn then there's even sweet corns and a sunberry so also cucumbers I'm gonna do them in here in the starts instead of direct sowing because I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put them yet but by the time they're ready, I think I'll have a place figured out. So that'll be cool. And all my bugs, roaches, and isopods from my business. But the roaches are also for chicken feed is where the focus is going as we ascend here. Let's check out the rabs. Hello, sir. Oh my gosh. Look at you, aren't you just beautiful? What are you guys doing? So this is where the gate is to section off these two areas here where this is rabbits, ducks, and then over here is rabbits and chickens. Yes. Hello, sir. What are you doing there? Look at that, there's, a, there's an egg here. They uh, like this little spot. Okay, now back here where the magic is happening this is the one nest which was originally two nests and there's like 14 babies 14 or 15 and the mama does are tending to this one nest now two does and over here was where it was until it merged so it was one two and now it's just one uh i'm guessing they like it because <laughs> they're not abandoning it which is beautiful that makes me really really happy to see something like that happening hello sir and then there's um the the two hens well two of the hens of the muscovy ducks are inside this box right now laying on eggs i'm sure soon it's been a couple weeks at least they started so soon maybe in a couple more weeks week or two even there'll be some babies popping out of there with them front yard sun's going down i figured i'd get into the front yard and show you guys real quick what's happening uh painting the house caulking the house you see all the caulk lines up here apple trees that i started from seed they're in the ground looking really good there's going to be an apple orchard in my front yard and then here's cherry tree cherry tree has got cherries forming on it now you see that there and then underneath it is strawberries up by this stump is some strawberries with some wild ones that I pulled from the wild last year. And then this front beds are getting ripped out and I'm gonna go ahead and get some good fertile soil in there and plant food. Strawberries I transplanted up here and I've got tons of strawberries that I'm just moving around all over the place now. By next year, I'm gonna have just so many and I'm gonna give them to my neighbors too because I'm sure by then they'll want more. And over here is there's two compost piles. This is the pallet fence that I built and uh, recycled pallets recycle pallets and use the wood for everything and uh, compost piles i'm making uh, two more there's two already and i keep those flipped and i'm going to build a fence to section it off finish that section so it's all fenced in and then there's leaf litter that i'm saving for bedding and here is grass weeds that my neighbor pulled and i saw him pulling them and he doesn't spray anything no chemicals so i told him i need that and that's animal feed and the grass clippings it's all drying out here on this tarp over here is some hay that i have still at the processing center for the animals and my mess everything's just kind of all over the place right now but i'm 
messy organized. I know what's going on. It's just got to get through building and um, organizing everything still. It's just a lot. Over there along that tree line is a bed as well that I'm going to rip out and put all food in there. And then all up front in front of this fence is going to be food beds and through the front orchard where I'm going to put in even two more trees. I'm also just going to be putting in rows of food. Sun's going down. These buckets I fill up with my water filter systems and I put blue tape on them to know that they're full of water. This one's I just went and topped up a bunch of waters but I fill them up. I have three of them and they stay full as well as my filters so that way there's always water on deck. Over here I wanted to show you on this arch trellis I've got on this side I built these sections so I can plant and still get through and there's tomatoes at each one and those tomatoes I'm gonna um, get them so they're tied up to this side of the trellis and that'll be cool I'll have tomatoes all up on there and then back here it's tomatoes too two of them and then I sectioned this spot off inside this chicken run under the deck coop and it's got three humps that are zucchinis planted and then zucchini should fill in this area and there's also cucumber seeds I put in down there so those should grow up along the back side of this trellis and then in front here in this front section I designed I also put in squash winter squash so those are gonna grow and everything that grows grows if something doesn't it doesn't if it's looking unhealthy maybe pull it if it's looking too thick maybe pull it but we'll see how it all goes I figure the tomatoes will grow up on this side and then the squash will grow up through the inside up and over even a bit and then these tomatoes will grow on the side and we'll see just how much we can get on there my rooster he's in here hanging out right now he's a loud boy if the events big events happen and things change we're gonna have to watch our animals because people are gonna want them they're gonna come for them hungry masses well I was thinking go underground with the animals outside area if you need to and you know really hide them in some kind of like hole in the ground that's covered up but then I got to thinking you hide them bring them indoors I've had animals well you see rooster there and then rabbits I got in the kitchen uh, I've had a uh, coop actually built aviary downstairs in my basement last year and I uh, disassembled that because I put them back outside but that was because I had roosters outside that made noise and the ordinance I had an issue with so I took them out of the yard for a minute and now there's hens back out there but they're quiet and then rooster dude he's inside so he's not making noise outside anymore and um, indoors though so I got my grow room set up with these pond liners and these pond liners can act real well to protect the floor and then you know in a worst case scenario you bring your animals indoors and they're close and you can watch them and they're safe and you know the smells of the dust all that is really it's holistic it's farm life it's natural and if you're strong and you got a strong immune system you don't consume the toxins in our environment and you eat organic and all that your body is designed to handle that stuff we have for generations and generations of all of our ancestors homesteading and our bodies have become naturally accustomed to the animals and their waste and the dirt and the natural dust of life just not the toxic uh, synthetic stuff that poisons you that's what we're not accustomed to it's nighttime and this is absolutely insane so i'm out here just feeding the animals last time for the night and i noticed just maggots everywhere crawling around out here they're on like everything they're all over this thing and in here on the ground in this chicken run under the coop they're all over the place because well they're coming from this bucket this maggot bucket which is just pouring it's just pouring out maggots right now you see that that's insane and the other two are doing the same but not nearly as much as this one and what was in it well what is in it is fish 
some fish carcass from my neighbor a lot of them in there and well from the looks of it it has spawned that's just crazy so these maggots are on everything all over and the chickens are going to have a field day with these when they get up in a few hours insane it's wet it's raining